Hey guys, it's Yara. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. I hope you guys are all doing great. For today's video, I'm going to talk about God. Um, of course, I always do that. But I want to talk about like, um, wait. <coughs> Bless. <coughs> Bless me. <laughs> um, where was I? Oh yeah. Today I'm going to talk about <sighs> Bless me, oh my gosh <laughs> Yeah, so we're going to get right into the video um, I didn't write any notes, usually I write notes for my videos so I don't cause I get sidetracked But for this video, I'm going to just let the Holy Spirit lead me so yeah, let's just get right into the video. Sometimes I read God's word and I just start crying. I am a crybaby. I cry a lot. Not cry a lot, but... Okay, that's... Okay, wait. Let's... <laughs> I'm a crybaby, but I don't cry on purpose. If I'm watching a movie and it's sad, I will cry. If I'm reading a book and it's sad, I will cry. If I'm hearing someone talk about something that's sad, I will cry. Um... I don't know, my eyes are just naturally water. <laughs> I cry easily, yeah. So like, if you ever watch a movie with me and it's a sad movie, I will be bawling my eyes out. Like, you will see me fall. Um, something to brag about, I just cry often. But when I read God's word, I cry a lot too. I think I cry like every single day. And it's not just because I want to, I just, I get so gripped by the words written in God's word. I just... I don't do it on purpose, I just, the tears just fall on a daily basis because I get so amazed and I'm so in awe of how much God is so good and how he loves us so much. So I was reading Lamentations, I've never read Lamentations before, but I just finished Jeremiah, so now I'm in Lamentations. I'm actually, I actually finished reading and went to Ezekiel. Um, but I wanted to share with you a couple of verses I just dis not discovered, but I read in chapter 3. That demonstrate how much God loves us, and I think it's good to be reminded. Lamentations chapter 3, verses 19 to 27. It says, Remember, O Lord, my affliction and my wandering, the wormwood and the gall bitterness. My soul continually remembers them and is bowed down within me. But this I call to mind, therefore I have hope. It is because of the Lord's loving kindness that we are not consumed, because his tender compassions never fail. They are new every morning. Great and beyond measure is your faithfulness. The Lord is my portion and my inheritance, says my soul. Therefore, I have hope in him and wait expectantly for him. That passage, verse 24, reminds me of Isaiah 40. Um, the end of Isaiah 40. Anyways, verse 25 says, The Lord is good to those who wait confidently for him, to those who seek him on the authority of God's word. It is good that one waits quietly. For the salvation of the Lord. It is good for a man that he should bear the yoke of godly discipline in his youth. Now I want to share another scripture. Jeremiah chapter 9 verse 24. But let the one who boasts boast in this, that he understands and knows me, and acknowledges me and honors me as God, and recognizes without any doubt that I am the Lord who practices loving kindness, justice, and righteousness on the earth. For in these things I delight says the Lord. Amen. In these two passages, God talks about um, his loving kindness. Like I mentioned in Jeremiah 9 24, um, the Lord of delights in justice, righteousness, loving kindness. He's a just God. We live in a world where people are wicked. Wicked. People are double-minded. One second they'll be like, I love you. The next second they'll be like, I hate you. But God is not like that. God is a just God. He delights in justice. He is for justice. When you see people suffering, people um, suffering with like police brutality or like racism or people who are being oppressed, like people who are poor or people who are who have a body deformity. God sees the way they're treated and he's not laughing. He's not smiling. He is disappointed. He's not happy. He does not delight in those things. He does not take those things lightly. Um, so remember that. that. God is a just God. That he loves us so much. I like how it says they are new every morning. His compassions, his loving kindness, his mercies, they are new every morning. You don't wake up because your alarm woke you up. 
You woke up by the grace of God, by his mercy. There are people who go to sleep and they die in their sleep and the doctors say, we don't know what happened. We have no idea what happened. They have no history of sicknesses. They just suddenly passed away. This happens on a daily basis. People die and don't wake up. When you wake up, it's not because your alarm woke you up. It's because of God, his mercy and his grace. Think about this. Take some time to think about what I'm saying. You, the fact that you're watching this video right now is because of God's grace and his mercy. People go throughout the day and they just suddenly stop and drop and die. People die sometimes like so suddenly and so randomly. Like I said, the doctors can't explain what happened. They have no idea what happened. So the fact that you are watching this video right now is because of God's grace. It's because of God's mercy. It's because his spirit led you to watch this video. So don't take life for granted. Because you wake up um, is because of God. You know, the fact that you're awake is because of God and his mercies are new every morning. As long as you have life in you, you have a chance to get right with God. As long as, long as you wake up, you have a chance to get right with God. Don't take life for granted. God is a just God. If you were to read through the Old Testament, maybe the first time you would read it, you'd be like, okay, these punishments don't make sense. God is so harsh. Why would he do this? Why would he do that? Remember this, like I said before, God is a just God. He does not judge people because he's bored. He does not punish people because he's bored. He does it according to their works. Jeremiah 21 verse 14. But I will punish you in accordance with the appropriate consequences of your decisions and your actions, says the Lord. I will kindle a fire in your forest and it will devour all that is around you. He judges and punishes people according to what they do, their deeds, their actions, the words that they say. Don't ever forget that. God is a just God. He will not punish you for something that you did not do. And I could share more scriptures that talk about this, but there's so many, so I won't do that. But maybe take some time to meditate on that scripture. Meditating means to think over something over and over again. Meditating is not the other thing that people do in the new age where you think of like your body part and like you do that thing. No. Meditating in, in godly terms is to think over his word. To think over and over and over again. If you read through the New Testament or Old Testament, you see the Israelites and the things that they did. So when God uh, speaks uh, to them through his prophets, his words may look like they're harsh, may sound harsh, but they're not because he's a just God. Another thing I wanted to mention is um, we need to have reverence for God. We need to have respect for God. He is not a genie in a bottle. When we need a wish, we don't go up to God and be like, hey God, do this for me. We need to be respectful of God. God is a loving God. He's merciful. He's just. He's Alpha and Omega, beginning and the end, first and last. Revelation 22 verse 13. He is good. His mercies endure forever. He is the one who sent his son to die for our sins. God is good. He is faithful. He is true. He's Jehovah Jireh, our provider. He is Jehovah um, Rapha, our healer. He's Yahweh. He's Yeshua. God is so good. He's the creator of the sky. He's the creator of the moon, of the sun, of the stars, of the birds of the air, the fish of the sea. He created you and he created me. Not me rhyming. Um, but he's so, 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 so good. So let us not treat him like the big man in the sky. God, I am in need of help. Help me. God, I want a car. Give me a car. Let's not treat him like a genie. Let's have reverence for him. If you read through the Old Testament, like I mentioned before, the Israelites, um, they didn't treat God good. They, they treated him horribly. I like to say this, that um, God didn't deserve the way the Israelites treated him, and they didn't deserve the way that he treated them. God treated them with love, with mercy, with compassion, but they treated him like this random guy. They didn't care for him, they didn't love him. And it brings me to tears, thinking about how horrible they were toward God. The Bible says that he heard their father's cries. Basically, they were slaves in Egypt. Um, the Israelites were the Egyptians' slaves. And there's a scripture in the Bible where it says that God heard the cries of their forefathers, therefore he sent Moses to go deliver them. And so he brought them out of Egypt. But they made idols. They blasphemed God's name. They complained. They were so ungrateful. So the Lord punished them, punished them, punished them, but also he showed his love toward them. 
Nehemiah 9 is a great chapter. If you guys want to read God's love towards the Israelites, read Nehemiah chapter 9. God is so loving that you can be the most wicked person in the world and you can still um, be made right with God. A good example in the Word of God that everyone uses is Paul. His name was Saul before. Saul was a man who killed Christians. He killed, he murdered believers. But he had this supernatural encounter with God where he changed his ways. He did a 180, he repented of his sin, and then he became a Christian. In the most darkest place of your life at this moment, maybe you were addicted to drugs. You do drugs every single day. Maybe you have hateful thoughts towards your family members. Maybe you are a liar, you lie all the time. It doesn't matter where you are, God can pull you out of that situation. Um, now I want to share a scripture, a chapter actually, that really gets me excited and emotional as well. All right, so Psalm 107 verses 10 to 15, it says, Those who sat in darkness and in the shadow of death, bound in affliction and irons, because they rebelled against the words of God and despised the counsel of the Most High. Therefore he brought down their heart with labor. They fell down and there was none to help. Then they cried out to the Lord in their trouble, and he saved them out of their distresses. He brought them out of darkness and the shadows of death and broke their chains in pieces. Oh, that men would give thanks to the Lord for his goodness and for his wonderful works to the children of men. Amen. I read this chapter at least once a month. I always go back to it. And I just, I get so in awe whenever I read it. So in this specific scenario in the scripture, these people rebelled against God. They knew his commandments, they knew his word, but they turned away from him. They despised the counsel of the Most High. So God punished them for that. It says here that he put, that he, um, they were bound in affliction and irons and chains in the shadow of death and darkness. So God punished them because of their sin. And so if you think about it, they deserved that. They deserved whatever they were going through. But it says here that when they cried out to the Lord in the midst of their trouble, he saved them. When they cried out to God in the midst of their trouble, these people who rebelled against God, he saved them. Do you understand what I'm saying? Do you understand what the scripture is what the scripture is saying? These people maybe deserved to die. They deserved to go through whatever they went through. But as soon as they cried out to God, with their whole hearts, God delivered them. That is the love of God. It doesn't matter what you've done what you're doing right now, when you ask God to help you, when you cry out to him, he will come and his love will just overshadow you. His love will just protect you. He will forgive you of your sin and he will give you a new heart. You will become a new creature, a new creation. It doesn't matter what you've done. That is the love of God. That is how loving God is. I wanna give you guys an analogy. Let's just say there's a couple, a man and a woman, and the girl cheats on him once. She sleeps with another guy. In the world that we're living in today, the guy would be like, get out of here. We're done, we're over. And that, that's that. Most people would end the relationship. They would not give that person a second chance. But what if this guy gave this girl a second chance? Not just once, not just twice, but as many times as she asks him. Maybe she sleeps around with 15 other guys and each time she goes up to this the guy, her original boyfriend and says, I'm sorry, can you give me a second chance? What if he said, okay, every single one of those times? What if she slept with a hundred different people? What if she cheated on him a hundred times? And every single one of those times he said, okay, I forgive you and still accepted her. In the society that we live in today, that would be weird. That would not be normal. People would think that you're out of your mind. Are you stupid? This person is cheating on you all the time, continuously. How dare you bring them back? How dare you accept them back? Guess what? That man is God. That man is Jesus. That is God. 
we cheat on him all the time consistently and we ask him for forgiveness and every single time he forgives us that is love like no other that is unconditional love we say god i'm sorry he forgives us and then we go back and do the same thing that we said we we're sorry for and every single time he says okay i forgive you Thinking about that brings me to tears because it doesn't make sense. That's not normal. Who would do that? But that is the love of God. Some Christians say, God, if, or not Christians, but people say, God, if you get me out of a situation, I'll serve you. And God will get them out of that situation and they won't serve him. They'll continue living in sin. And this could happen so many times. I know of a guy who had a, a drug problem. He was addicted to smoking. His lung collapsed three times. And on each of those occasions, he was like, God, if you heal me, if you help my lung, then I'll turn to you. And every single one of those times, he didn't do it. Three times. And then finally, he gave his life to Jesus Christ. Now he's living for him. But we always say, God, I won't do it again. And then we go do it. And not once does God say, get out of here. I'm not going to accept you. Every single time, he says, okay, I forgive you. Do you know any person on this earth who loves like that? Who has a love like that? I guarantee you, you know no one. The only person who loves like that is our God, is Jehovah, is Jesus. His love is unconditional. Don't treat God like a genie in a bottle. Have respect for him. He is disappointed when you sin. He is disappointed when you turn to your false gods, when you turn to your idols, who are not even alive, who are not even real. He is heartbroken. When I was into K-pop, God was not happy with me. He was not smiling. He was disappointed because I turned away from my first love and I pursued these false gods. And I poured out my love for him to another man who does not even know I exist. He was not happy. He was not smiling. He was very disappointed in me. But because of his mercy, he pulled me out of that place. Because of his grace, he pulled me out of that place. I could have died and I could have gone straight to hell. It is by God's mercy that I'm sitting right here, guys. God loves you so much. He loves you so much. He doesn't want you to go to hell. He doesn't want you to go to hell. He wants you to turn to him. So if you are watching this video and you don't have a relationship with God. Maybe you've turned to drugs. Maybe you've turned to, to porn. Maybe you've turned to stealing. Maybe you've turned to abusing your body. Maybe you've turned to, 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 to isolating yourself. Whatever it is that you're turning to, you know in your heart that it's not fulfilling. It's not satisfying you. It's only a temporary fix. You know that you only get high on drugs, you feel good and suddenly you have a crash. You know that you cannot find a stable boyfriend, you're, you're turning to guys and nothing is satisfying you. No one is filling that void in your heart. Give your life to God today, to Jesus today. This is not a religion. I'm not asking you to come into this cult. I'm not asking you to become a, a Christian so you can wear a cross on your neck and sing hymns. No, I'm asking you to give God a chance. To accept him into your heart. It's a relationship. I acknowledge that Christ died for my sins and I say, God, I'm thankful for this gift. I'm thankful for this sacrifice. Don't wait till you have a near-death experience, till you, till you get into an accident to make it right with God. Give your life to him right now. You could die 10 minutes after you watch this video. You can die tomorrow. You can die right now. Don't wait. Do not wait, guys. Give your life to Jesus Christ before it is too late. He loves you. He sees the hurt. He sees the pain that you experience every single day. He sees the cycle of you going to things and not being fulfilled, not being satisfied. And he wants you to know that he is the only one who can satisfy you. I am a very happy person. I am so joyful. It's not because I... I live in a safe in a safe home, I have a good family. It's because I serve a God who loves me, who is real, who sent his son to die for my sins, a God who watches over me, a God who hears me when I when I pray to him, a God who heals 
because I serve a God who is living, because I serve a God who is just. That is why I'm happy. The world depicts Jesus as this guy who is the son of Mary and he's just this religious figure. He's not a religious figure. He is God's son. He loves you so much. He wants you to turn away from your religion. He wants you to turn away from your sin and pursue him with your whole heart. God loves you. I cannot stress this enough. He loves you so much. God will never leave you nor forsake you. Perhaps you've been in so many relationships and every single one of these relationships, the person leaves you. Maybe your father left you when you were younger or your mom left you or maybe your parents are getting a divorce right now. These people won't be here forever, obviously, because they can't, they can't stay consistent. They were with you for a little while and suddenly they, they just left. The person said that they loved you and the next second they said that they hated you, I don't ever want to see you again. God is not like that. God is a loving God. He will never leave you nor forsake you. He will always be with you. Not because you're religious, no, but because you believe in his son Jesus, who died for your sins, was buried and resurrected on the third day, and because you have a relationship with him. That is the only way to get to heaven, through Jesus. The Bible says that Jesus, says, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one comes to the Father except through me. You cannot get to heaven because of religion. You cannot get to heaven because you're a good person. The only way to get into heaven is accepting Jesus Christ. Good people go to hell, unfortunately. On earth, they gave to charities. They were nice. They took care of their family. But because they didn't believe in Jesus, they went to hell. Good people go to hell. So maybe you're curious. Um... I want to encourage you to read the Bible. Pick up the Word of God. Maybe you have a Bible in your house somewhere. Ask your parents, you know, Mom, have you, do you know where the Bible is? If you can't find the Bible, go to your phone. You can download an app. You can go on the internet. Read the scriptures. Have a desire to know who God is for yourself. Seek the truth. I don't want you to perish. I don't want you to go to hell. God loves you so much. You didn't watch this video by accident. The Lord led you to this video. Maybe he's giving you a second chance. Make it right today. The Bible says today is a day of salvation. Don't wait until you're old. I'm gonna fix my life around first and then I'll give my life to Jesus Christ. That's not how it works. In Psalm 107, these people didn't make it out of their, their chains. They didn't come out of the chains and then say, God help me. No, in the midst of their chains, in the midst of their affliction, they cried to God. In the midst of whatever it is you are going through, cry out to God and he will hear you and he will answer you. That is the God I serve. Anyways, this video is pretty long enough. I hope God was able to speak to you through my voice. Um, if you know someone who needs to hear this video, please send it to them. Don't hesitate. You know, they may not watch it today, but maybe they'll watch it in three weeks, you know. Send this video to your friend who needs to hear the love of God. Um, and I pray that you will treat God with respect and reverence, that you will recognize that God loves you, that he's not just a guy in the sky, but he definitely wants you to acknowledge that he cares for you. And when he gives you second chances, don't take them lightly. Don't take them lightly. Remember that Christ loves you and he cares for you. Look at the Israelites and say, I don't want to be like that. I don't want to be unstable. I don't want to be double-minded. I want to be right with God. Um, I hope you guys have a great day, a great night, a great morning, and I'll see you guys by God's grace in the next one. Bye.